My personal story is that in 1969, I was 25 years old. So I'm not going to do the math for you from that part, but in 1969, I was 25 years old. I just got out of the Air Force. You heard I was a Russian linguist. That gave me zero skill in the, in the workforce. The only people that hired people like me were the ones I just left. They wanted to put me behind a desk. I don't do desks. So I'm in the workforce with a wife and two children and no skill. No salable skill. Now I'm going to suggest to you that we have not hundreds, probably not thousands, probably tens of thousands of people in our state and across this country, 25 years of age, married, children, and no skill. And lay that against the fact that you've already heard today 400,000 unfilled jobs. Why? You can certainly believe that if I'm 25 years old or 30 years old and I have a wife and a couple of kids, I need a job. Interestingly, uh, we just heard from James Ford. James Ford and I are both from Illinois. We grew up 100 miles from each other, not very far. I've been known to drive 100 miles for a good meal, as you can probably tell. The, we grew up at different times, both in small Midwest cities. When I got out of high school, I don't have a family, I didn't have any money, I joined the military. And that's how I ended up being 25 years old, a couple of kids, a wife to support, and no skill. We have got to solve that problem because we have hundreds of thousands of jobs unfilled. And as we know already, we know already that the, the lack is that our, it's not jobs, the lack is the skill that we're, we're talking about. Here's an additional problem that we're going to have to face. And that is 50% of the jobs that people are doing right now will be gone, will be gone in, by 2030. We have heard the phrase that, or the, or the allegation, if you want to call it that, the challenge, that 60% of our kids will be doing jobs that have not yet been invented. Well, how do we prepare people for jobs that haven't been invented? That's, there's really only one answer to that, and that is learn all you can about all you can. But we've got to figure this out, and we've got to figure it out together. Now, I'm going to introduce you to two words that really resonate with me, really resonate when it comes to education, society, and jobs. The two words are continuum. One, one of the words is continuum. And that begins at birth, some will even say before birth, all the way the rest of our lives. For many years, we didn't look at education that way. There is a continuum, which means articulation. We've got to, instead of this, I remember when I first came to the legislature, one of the challenges we had was we had more kids going into driver's education than ever before and more kids failing the driver's test than ever before. What kind of sense does that make? It's because what we were teaching isn't what they were asking. That applies to the job market the continuum of education, and the second word is scaffolding. You learn this, which allows you to learn that, which allows you to learn that. And that brings into play articulation. So when I got out of the service and I'm trying to find a job, what were my options? Well, Dan Gerlach and I have proven that dancing is not one of them. <laughs> I couldn't help but throw that in. I just. I just couldn't help but throw that in. <laughs> the, uh, so what are the options? Community colleges, tech schools, 
The challenge for us is we've got to get education to our people and not necessarily our people to education. We're a big state. We're a big country. The challenge is bringing education, education to the people, to the student, and not, instead of the old way of students to education. One of the th ways we're going to do that certainly is technology. It's not the only way. But technology has been a game changer for all of us. And yes, I'm aware, as we all are, about this fear of screen time, and our kids are playing on the, on the machines too much and all the games, and that's truly a problem. By the same token, that gadget allows us the opportunity to deliver the finest education in the world to the world, to the poorest and most rural people, at a time when they can accept the education, when they can use the education. We've heard about flipped classrooms and, and these other approaches. We've got to find some balance here. And we can. In fact, is we will. It's because it's not an option. We will do that. But right now, we've got to focus on the goal. And the goal is to provide our colleagues, our friends, our neighbors, the folks for whom we are responsible if in any leadership position, we're responsible for ourselves and for others. We've got to provide them with the tools, the education, the skills. It doesn't necessarily mean we all, have, I think we all now agree, it doesn't necessarily mean a four-year degree. What does it mean? i give you a cute little, I don't know about cute, a little interesting story. I have a granddaughter that, um, is just getting engaged to a, to a young man who graduated from the University of Alabama with a degree in, in accounting. But he's a young guy full of energy. I had some other words, but I decided energy might be a better one. Uh, full of energy. Young man uh, is an outdoors kind of, kind of young man. He is now a lineman. A lineman. You know what a lineman is? It's Glenn Campbell made a song about lineman makes a hundred thousand dollars a year that may come as a surprise to you because it sure came as a surprise to me and put a big smile on my face given the fact that oh, my my daughter finally found somebody that actually can do something he's now training to be one of those crazy people that hang off of helicopters and fix those those uh, high tension high power lines you know what those folks make? 200,000 a year plus. I keep thinking back about the fact that I don't do desks. Well, I don't do high wire or helicopter hang offers <laughs> either, but that $200,000 a year for a young guy. I don't know how many of you have looked under the hood of your car lately, but I, I barely can figure out how to get the hood of my car open, let alone figure out how to, how to fix it. When I grew up in the 40s and 50s, we fixed pretty much every car with pliers, a ball-peen hammer, duct tape, and wire. I had a Ford Flathead V8. How many, I suspect most of you don't even know what a Flathead V8 is. We have got to start bringing our education, we know that, bring our education in line with the job market, we know that. It's how do we do that that is the challenge for all of us. And we have a lot of ideas, and we need to be thinking about those and discussing them. And, and working together, talking to each other, not at each other. Those of you that know me know how I feel, how strongly I feel about civil discourse. We've got to stop throwing each other under the bus and looking at the goal. Keep our eye on the prize. 